Hey guys, we're on another video today. So time to dive back in and we're on project restoration. So that is my red MR2, the one that I brought back to life that was fully rotted. And now it is looking, I don't wanna say spectacular, but it's looking a lot better and it looks decent, right? If you see it on camera, it looks pretty decent. But the issue today is I have no reverse lights. I didn't realize reverse lights were not working and somebody told me about them and I figured this is a great opportunity to fix it because I'm sure some of you guys have the same issue. So let me to bring it into the cabin and let me show you what's happening. All right, so what's happening is, as you guys figured, if you put the car in reverse and we go to the back end of the car and nothing happens. So guys, as I mentioned, this is what we're working with. We got the rear lights here on the Project Restoration MR2. They're not working and I didn't realize they were not working because I've been driving this car around and Coincidentally, I was backing up the other day and a friend of mine said, hey, you have no reverse lights. And I was like, well, didn't realize that. So, you know, um, so, you know, as with everything here, if we got a problem, we got to fix it. So I'm going to try to fix these lights right here. Now, typically the issue is in here. So right in the engine bay, right in here by your gearbox. So I want to show you on a transmission that I have outside the car, but just for perspective, just looking in the engine bay. If you look down, I took the factory airbox right out of here. Got it right over there. So all you'd have to do is remove your airbox. Pretty easy, couple of bolts. Um, but that's not what this video is all about. Not about taking out an airbox today. But we're going to go right in and I'm going to show you guys what I'm working with. So let me get this camera actually right there see that switch right there if i pull my finger out it will zoom the right about there so that is the reverse switch and now let me take you over to the transmission on the bench so you guys can see a better angle of what i'm talking about so the beauty of having extra parts i got an extra transmission laying around so here you go this is the reverse switch so this typically goes bad i don't know why they go bad but i'll show you why I suspect they go bad because I bought a new one. So I'll show you what it is. So it's a uh, inch and 116 that fits here, I think a 27 millimeter. But we're gonna have to get that removed from the transmission, insert a new one and it should work. But before I do all of that, I wanna show you guys a quick test. So one, you can check the resistance on this thing, but I'm gonna show you an easier way to just figure it out. If it's your switch that bad, that's bad. Um, so hopefully it can help you guys out. So if your reverse lights, these guys right here are out, this might be your fix. So let's head over back to the engine. I'm gonna show you a couple of troubleshooting technique and then we'll go ahead and get the switch replaced. All right, so here is my replacement switch. So it comes with a little washer. So it does come with a little washer right there. And this was under 10 bucks, so a very inexpensive way if this is actually what your issue is, which I would suspect for the most of us, that's what it is. So if you look at this, there's a little ball, this thing you can actually push it down. So I'm assuming when you put the car in reverse, this pin pushes in, closes the circuit, and then your reverse lights will come on. In my case, as I mentioned, they're not coming on. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to unplug this thing right here, uh, this switch right here. And then technically, if I bridge these two plugs, so I'm gonna bridge them, technically the light should come on. And all I'm doing now is bypassing the switch. So if I bypass the switch, then I almost for certainty can say it is the switch that's bad, but it's kind of in an awkward position. This is a 5S motor, but that pipe, this one right here is in the way. And to get that thing moved, just a little bit more work than I'd want to do. Let's go ahead and bridge that plug right there and see what happens. So I have this little bridge thing that I made and I typically use it for the diagnostic box over there when you're trying to bridge to read and check engine lights. So I always have one of these handy in the 5S cars or the older cars with OBD1 um, system. So let me insert this in there and see what's going on. All right, so great news here. We got the plug bypassed. So technically by doing this, you are replicating what the switch would be doing when you put it in reverse and it closes the circuit. So we just went ahead and closed the circuit without the switch. Um, if I am right in saying that the reverse switch is bad, if I go in now to the car and put the key in the ignition, 
we should have reverse lights, assuming the switch is, is what's bad. So let's head inside the vehicle. We're going to put the key in the ignition, like so. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it so we get all the lights on the dash, just like that. This is assuming the car is running and you throw it in reverse. Now in our case, we don't have to put it in reverse because we bypassed the switch, so we're not using the reverse switch to activate the reverse lights. Let's go to the back of the car and see if this works. All right, so ignition key is on and let's head back here. Let's see what we have. And there you go. We got the reverse lights on. So with that said, we know for sure that something is going on with our reverse switch. Could be that the connections are corroded. I'm gonna to try to clean it first before I go through the hassle of trying to remove the switch. Cause as you see, it is tucked in right there, that little gray switch. And that pipe is in the way. This, this water pipe right here is in the way. So it, does, it doesn't make it easy to get out. Um, so I'm gonna clean up the contacts. Hopefully that's what it is, save me some trouble. If not, you guys get to see more video and we can fight to get that switch out and put this new one in. Well, you know, these things always end up being a little bit more difficult than you expected. So I have disconnected the battery right there. And now I am heading to the back of the engine bay because this pipe is in the way. This water line right here is in the way of me getting out that switch. And I could try to bend that pipe away, but the socket is just not going on properly. We need a half inch. So it's a pretty large socket that needs to go over there, 27 millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the starter out because this thing is connected on a bracket that runs around the back of the starter. So I gotta remove the starter so I can move that hose, hopefully out of the way where I can get the socket on, have proper leverage to be able to pull that sensor because I'm pretty sure it's in there pretty good. It's been sitting there since this car is new, which is from 1991. So I doubt it's gonna come out very easy. So let me go ahead, get that starter out and see where it takes us. All right guys, so this is kind of a rabbit hole, but I wanted to show you guys, you see where my socket is? Right, this is where the starter came out. Right here, this is the opening right here to where the starter goes into transmission. Hopefully you guys can see that right there. So right below it, that's where that bolt is that holds that bracket in place that allows us to move this line so we can access the sensor which is down there. So a little bit complicated, a little bit more work than I had anticipated, but I could try to force it, but I'm here just chilling in the garage and I figured, hey, you know what? If I'm gonna do it, let's just do it the right way. So I'm gonna move that hose out of the way, that way I can put proper torque on this sensor and get it out. And just looking at it, I think the sensor, one of the uh, pins on the sensor is actually broken. So we'll take it out, we'll look at it, because um, it's very hard to see inside the engine bay. So let's just go ahead and get it out and then we'll talk about it some more. Okay, quick update. So there is actually one, two bolts holding that bracket in. One is on the right side of where the starter goes in, and one is on the left side. Very, very hard to see, but it is down there. One on the left, one on the right. You can see that. There you go. That's one, and then the other one is on the opposite side. So this is overkill in terms of what I'm showing you, but if you're doing this, you're gonna to wanna to know where these things are. So I figured it's good to document it. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. So now I can move this hose out of the way so even with the starter out and all that clearance the pipe removed it is still a tight fit because you got the fuel lines right here the return and it's stuck up as you can see it's stuck right against the line so it's very close but this is a setup so i'm gonna throw some torque on it now and hope for the best and I wish you guys could see, I'm film, filming this by myself, but yeah, I had to use the breaker bar, but I got it to snap, well, pull, not snap. We're gonna take it out right now. There it 
There she is. So that's why our reverse light is not working. So we're gonna throw the new one. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. All right, there's our new switch. We got it installed. I am pretty confident it's gonna work, but I got the starter disconnected. So I gotta put everything back together and then we're gonna test it. Typically, I'd say make sure you test it. So just turn your key, make sure your starter wire live is not connected to anything. I could short out and throw it in reverse, but I am so confident this is gonna work. I'm gonna put it back together and test it and show you guys. Moment of truth, let's see if our fix works for a reverse light. So I went ahead and I put the ear box in. I still have that hose to go in because I'm painting the clamps that go right there. So you'll see that in a second, but it should start. It should have reverse light. So we're gonna go inside, put the key in the ignition, throw this car in reverse and see what's up. Keys going in the ignition. Put the car in reverse and let's go check out in the back and see if we have reverse lights fingers crossed fingers crossed and there you go we have reverse lights so that switch was the problem took a little bit to get in there but again very easy job i'm sure a lot of you guys have the same issue so i hope this video helps you out um, easy way to fix your reverse lights and it's not always the bulbs and it, especially if both of them go out at the same time the odds of both bulbs blowing that's kind of rare um so it could be a wiring issue but most more than likely it's like what i have here which is a switch so we're gonna go ahead button this back up and that's another project done on our project restoration red mr2 i am trying to get this thing in the paint shop i wanted to kind of bring it back to oem spec but i'm so on the fence I don't know if I want to do OEM or I want to keep it the way it is. I don't know. I'm confused. But what I do know is that I like this red, but I think I want a brighter red. So time will tell. I'm kind of looking at colors right now. And if we do that, then this car is going to go through a whole not a transformation. But so far runs and drives and it's coming from afar. And I like it. So guys, I catch you guys on the next one. Be safe.